Our first speaker is Zikun Lee, computer science PhD student at the University of Minnesota. Her research interests lie in the automatic understanding of historical maps using computer vision and natural language processing techniques. She's engaged in work involving the detection of text on historical map labels, the connection of separated text labels, the linking of recognized place names to existing knowledge bases, entity linking, and the inference of label types, which is entity typing. Take it away. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, uh, hello everyone, I'm Zhou Kun, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the map curator system. I know earlier uh, today, our keynote speaker, Katie, provides us the overall image for overall picture for the whole machine 3D maps project. And uh, I'm going to focus more on the automatic tags detection and extraction part. Yeah, with that being said, um, I'm a PhD student from the University of Minnesota, and I have worked on uh, historical map and spatial data understanding using computer vision and uh, natural language processing techniques. Uh, previously, I worked on synthetic historical map generation by generating uh, some ima synthetic images following the historical style from the OpenStreetMap images. And I also work, I am working on the toponym detection to detect the place names from some input uh, art paragraphs. And I also worked on the text detection and this is our main focus uh, of the talk today. Uh, here is the overall structure of the presentation. To begin with, I'm going to show a demo um, to kind of give us uh, some motivation on why we are doing text spotting. And then we will talk about map processing with machine learning and the goal of map curator system. And then I will describe the overall pipeline of the map curator. And uh, later on, I will share you the code and documentation, like where you can find them uh, about this open source map curator system. Right, uh, uh, this is the demo part and uh, what you are looking at here is the interface called Recogito. With Re we have integrated map curator with Recogito so that a user can upload historical map images from uh, the local machine. And after that is done, uh, you can uh, look at the image to make sure this is the one that you want to work on. Then you can launch Map Curator by using that uh, option drop down button to launch Map Curator. And then this uh, Map Curator is going to execute in the back end. And when the processing is complete, you can. Uh, click that image again and see that those are the text labels and the transcriptions that are automatically detected. Yeah, so this is what we can do for one single map. And imagine that what we can um, achieve if we process about 60,000 60, images. And this is another work that uh, we collaborated with the Ramsey map collection where we processed about 60,000 images and extract their, extracted their text labels. Uh, so if without the text label extraction and if you want to search for maps, let's say Minneapolis, then most likely you will, uh, the searching engine is only going to look at the title and description stuff. But if you are, uh, if you have extracted the text labels from all those maps, then you can uh, grab all the all the uh, you can you can retrieve all the um, image patches that contain the word Minneapolis and go to the map image and to find their location. And you can also look at its full 
uh, map as well. So you know for sure those that those are the maps that contain the word Minneapolis and uh, uh, this kind of give you the capacity to be able to search within a very, very large image collection. Okay. And a little bit more on what our lab is currently working on. Uh, our ultimate goal is to want to develop machine learning tools for historical map processing. And uh, we are uh, on the historical maps, we roughly divide the features that containing them into these two categories. One is geographic feature and the other is map text. The geographic feature uh, includes something like river, uh, houses, buildings, and uh, uh, some other uh, polygons like lakes. And we have another effort that's working on extracting these features automatically. And uh, the second one is the map text, uh, which is this one, the map curator one. So our goal is to have a machine learning model for text voting from maps. And also we want to be able to link the extracted map text to uh, existing geospatial database like OpenStreetMap. Yeah, the goal of map curator system is we want to find relevant maps and make their content useful. We want to support easy search and uh, we want to able to run complex queries um, effectively. And we want to convert the map content into useful data. Yeah. And uh, here is the uh, overall pipeline for the map curator system. Uh, we, we have two main parts. The first part uh, here is the tax detection and recognition. And the second part is post OCR and entity linking. Uh, and uh, the inputs for the map curator pipeline are here. Uh, for the inputs, um, we have, we support two options. One is you can provide some integrated metadata to tell the system where this image is located on the internet. And uh, you can give us the ground control points if the image is georeferenced and you can store all those information in the metadata and feed into the system. Or you can just uh, um, have one single map image on your local machine and, and run the map curator. Uh, on this side, we have the, yeah, uh, on, on this part, we also should provide the knowledge base that you want to connect to. So after the text labels are extracted, you want to link it to the external knowledge base. And we also have, um, for some sample map images, we also need to have wrong truth annotations just to verify that um, the system is working properly and uh, to report some precision records, recall scores. Uh, the text detection and recognition part looks like this. It starts from the map images or the integrated metadata, and we will break down the full map image into smaller patches uh, so that um, the neural network can handle that, uh, can uh, run them in parallel, and we wouldn't have um, GPU memory issues. And then we run it to patch text border on this small image patches to generate patch level text detection and recognition results. And then we have a patch to map merging module to merge the detected uh, detection and recognition results from the patch level to the map level. And uh, in the meantime, we have a spotter evaluator to check whether uh, the, the performance is uh, good or bad. And then if the input image is georeferenced, we also have we can also run this geocoordinate converter to convert the extracted labels from the image coordinate system to a geocoordinate system. And with a subsequent post OCR and entity linker to link uh, the extracted text labels to the knowledge base. And the output for all the modules will summarize into a GeoJSON file. Yeah, here uh, the image cropping module is very intuitive uh, because the full map image it 
mostly uh, contain thousands or tens of thousands of pixels, which is hard for neural network to handle. So we break them down into 1,000 by 1,000 um, patches. <clears throat> And for the text folder, we uh, provide two modularized pre-trained spotting models. The first one is Tester. Uh, this is a work proposed by uh, these authors in the CVPR last year. We have incorporated this model in our uh, map curator. And map curator can also switch uh, between this one and another model that we propose uh, this this one is called Spotter V2, and it is based upon, based upon Tester. And it is a new approach with a novel feature sampling strategy uh, that allows uh, the model to look at image features around the target points when predicting the bonding, bond, bond, uh, bonding polygons. And we also train the Spotter V2 with some synthetic training data we generated, as well as uh, general domain uh, tag spotting okay. data set. And we train this spot V2 with human annotations as well. And we are working on to have spotter to um, support multilingual tag spotting, not only in English, but also Arabic, Russian, Chinese, and Japanese. Okay, here you are, you are looking at the patch tag spotter output and uh, the patch to map merging uh, after, after we gathered all the patch level results together and put uh, and uh, concatenate them into one single map level. And for the multilingual text routing, we have run some initial experiments and uh, you can see that uh, uh, for if the background is okay, it's not very complicated, then the Russian um, spotting performs pretty good. And Arabic and Japanese is a little bit tricky. Um, their writings are more difficult to recognize and we are still working on improving these two. For the geo-coordinate converter, we have, um, after we get the text spotting results in the image coordinate system, we will use the ground control points provided from the image, from the GOT image and run, uh, run the transformation to convert that into the geo coordinate system. We will store the geo coordinates and the projection CRS in the output JSON file, GeoJSON file. And you can see the results after uh, it's being projected with uh, OpenStreetMap uh, as the background. For the post OCR and entity linking part, um, the goal of post OCR is to replace some of the predicted words from using a candidate word from uh, uh, OpenStreetMap as a tier. And the entity, for the entity linker, we will link the candidate word from the post OCR to, uh, to the OpenStreetMap by providing its IDs. And uh, the post OCR is um, method is based on some fuzzy search to search uh, in the OpenStreetMap uh, database uh, based on the popularity of the place names. And entity linker is um, in, in addition to uh, gathering all the uh, retrieve OSM entities, we also have a filtering step to filter out the geo entities that are outside of the map boundary. And here is what it looks like after processing with post OCR. So you can see the rough, uh, the, the direct output of the model uh, is this, but uh, this triple W is, uh, is not a real uh, place name. And uh, when lo after looking at the OpenStreetMap, uh, it can correct it into the right place name and also associate them with OSM IDs. Yeah, so that's the uh, pipeline for the map curator system. And we have released the code into the GitHub and uh, we built a documentation website to describe 
what each module does in in detail and we also provide sample commands on how to run the code uh, um, after you configured map curator and to summarize we have built a uh, build and released an automatic machine learning system map curator and uh, we demonstrated ability to process large amount of map images and uh, we integrated map curator with Recogito to enable user friendly interaction and it can support um, using swapping among different text borders. And we train it to work with multilingual text borders. And in the future, we want to improve on multilingual text borders. And we want to develop the capacity to handle all kinds of geographic features. Yeah. Right. So that's the end of my presentation. And here, the this QR code takes you to the Map Curator uh, web page. And this QR code on the right allows you to try our new uh, toponym recognition API if you are interested. And I'm happy to take any questions if you have. Hello, thank you so much. Uh, I was uh, especially curious after the keynote to hear more about the non-Roman uh, recognition. Um, I do not yet see any questions in the Q&A. Uh, if anyone has a question, they could pose it now. Yeah, look at that, Arabic, and yeah. Yeah, for this one, we uh, we generated we generated some synthetic data using the place name in OpenStreetMap because that is a multi that that covers the worldwide place names, and mm -hmm. um, we we after cre creating these synthetic data set, we can train the map curator to learn those different languages. Yeah, that's the basic idea. We have a question. Uh, from Laura, uh, what's in the metadata that is ingested? Is it descriptive or just administrative? Um, we are, so when talking about metadata, we are mostly uh, using only the ground control points as the input to the, to our um, geo-coordinate converting model. So we, we use that to uh, convert the detection results from the image coordinate system to the geo coordinate system. Uh, for the second question, is it descriptive or just administrative? Uh, I'm not quite familiar with the definition and differences between these two. Uh, I wonder if you can provide a little bit more context uh, what it means. I don't know if Laura wanted to. Clarify. We have another question while we're waiting. I, I see the title uh, and subjects are descriptive. Uh, we we so for the input of map curator, we do not use title or subject to guide the model for prediction. Uh, but we have we have we I think we are able to extract the title and subject text from the map. Just uh, so far, we we haven't do layout analysis like to. Uh, decide which part of the text are title and which parts are subjects. Yeah. I would have interpreted that wrong as a non-cataloger. I thought you meant, oh, it's yellow, you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's of, you know, certain artistic style. Okay. Uh, we have another question. When you crop, do the split words cause problems? Yes, it does cause problem. Uh, so, you can see that if you if we do non overlapping cropping and feed the model directly, so it, the the words tends to break down here. So one solution that we come up with, uh, which we haven't implemented yet, is to allow overlapped cropping so that we can merge those overlapping bounding boxes into one connected bounding box. Yeah, that's a very good question. Good mm -hmm. point. 